You're watching the Run Fruit YouTube channel. In case you don't know me, I'm Finlay, the Training and Development Manager at Run Fruit, and I've worked for the business for over 10 years. In this week's episode, we're going to be doing a review of the very popular Hoka Clifton 9, which they very kindly sent us to test out so we could tell you all about this amazing shoe. Hope you enjoy. For previous Clifton wearers, let's start with what's changed in the latest edition. The foam has been updated. While Hoka don't release much information about this, it's a lightweight EVA. The latest version is more responsive than the previous version. The midsole stack has been increased by 3mm, so there's more foam under your feet. The men's is a 32mm to 27mm stack, and the women's is a 29mm to 24mm stack. Some of the overlays and hot melts have been removed from the upper to make it lighter. However, more padding has been added to the heel colour to create a plusher fit. Overall, the latest Clifton 9 should feel lighter and more protective underfoot than the previous version. How does the Hoka Clifton 9 feel to run in then? Well, I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball here and say that the midsole doesn't actually feel that soft under your feet. But I am comparing that to shoes such as the Nike Zoomix Invincible Run 3, which uses a super foam and feels incredibly soft under your feet. And while it's not soft, the midsole does feel extremely padded and very protective. And actually, in my opinion, I think the slight firmness that the midsole has really improves the rocker sensation under your feet, which I'll come back to in a moment. So I've been testing these out at my slower to steady pace runs, which is exactly what the Clifton 9 midsole is designed for. Now that responsiveness really doesn't make these shoes feel better for faster pace running. If you try and pick up the pace in the Clifton 9, you're really going to feel like you're losing a little bit of energy through the midsole. But what that responsiveness does is work perfectly with the geometry of the midsole to create a really propulsive effect at those slower to steady state speeds. So as you're running along, it just feels really easy for your legs to just keep turning over and feels like you're putting a little less effort into actually that forward momentum, that forward movement. Before we go on, if you don't know what a rocker in a running shoe is, it's basically a curvature to the midsole. So it's a little bit like a wheel. So if you think about it, when you land, that curved midsole helps roll your foot forward. And what that does is really helps take the pressure off your Achilles and your calf muscle, muscles, which are loaded a lot when you're running. If you're like me and you get tight calf muscles, this shape of shoe, this geometry is really beneficial for deloading those areas. For example, I've run in shoes which are more cushioned and softer than the Clifton, but I've not had a rocker and my calves would get a lot tighter as a result. When it comes to support, the Clifton 9 is a neutral running shoe, but I found them very stable to run in. If you compare it back to shoes like the Nike ZoomX Invincible Run 3, your feet will definitely feel more planted in this. Now, I think some of that is definitely down to the firmness of the midsole, but there are a couple of other factors too. If you look at the base of the shoe, you can see how broad that is. So your feet are sitting on top of a really broad platform, which definitely creates stability. The other factor is the midsole walls actually wrap up around the side of your feet. So when you look at the side of a Hoka shoe, they look really thick and they are a thicker midsole shoe, but your foot's not sitting on top of that cushioning. It's actually sitting down into these walls of foam. So it's a little bit like a bucket seat and that just creates a little bit of more support around the side of your feet, which you notice particularly on the longer runs, just keeping everything in check. So something we've been asked a lot is how does the Clifton 9 fit? And I guess we should start with what those lateral midsole raised walls are like in the foot because Hoka gets a bit of a reputation for being narrow at points, but I think what a lot of runners are feeling is actually these walls that wrap up around the side of the foot. Another point to note with Hoka running shoes is that in the men's they only convert the US to UK size by half a size and in women's they only convert the US to UK size by one and a half sizes. So for example, I'm normally a 10 and a half UK in my running shoes, so that's an 11 and a half US in most running brands where there is in Hoka, an 11 and a half US is an 11 UK. So if you stick to your US size in Hoka running shoes, your normal US running size that is, you should get the right fit for your feet. We do also stock 
a wide fit version of the Clifton 9. So if you do prefer that extra space for your feet to display and you maybe tried these and thought they were a little bit too narrow, we would definitely recommend opting for that wide fit version. But always just remember with running shoes, when you jump up half a size, the width actually changes more than the length. So it's a really good tip for just getting that extra space across the forefoot if that's what you're needing. So if you're wondering how I found they fitted, well, I have quite a broad forefoot and I found the toe box to feel really accommodating. It fit my forefoot and my midfoot really well and held it nice and secure. While I could feel the shoe, there was no rubbing or friction on a run. So I guess if you feel those rails, don't be put off by it because actually it just does translate into some improved support when you're running. I did wear a slightly thinner sock with them. You could opt for a number of things here. I wore a features elite like cushion, so there's a little bit of padding in the toe, a little bit of padding in the heel, and that worked really nicely with the shoe. I think if I wore a thick cushioned sock, something with a lot of padding under the foot, that the shoe would be potentially too tight. So always bear that in mind that you can affect how the upper of a running shoe fits with the right running sock as well and pairing that thickness to the shape of the shoe. At run for it, one of the key traits people are looking for and how the upper of a running shoe fits is to get that locked in sensation around the ankle. And there's no doubt about it in the Clifton 9, they've really nailed the back of the shoe because it really does hug your foot and stops that ankle from moving around. You'll notice that it's got this pronounced point and taper away here. Now, that isn't just for aesthetics reasons, even though it's a bit of a signature look with Hoka running shoes now, it does help reduce some of the Achilles friction at the back of the shoe there and it makes it really easy to slip your foot in and out of the shoe we all know that runner who doesn't undo their running shoes when they're putting them on that might be you and actually that will probably just help preserve the back of the the shoe for longer and make sure that that doesn't collapse and break down onto your feet the important question then how will the hoka clifton 9 improve your run well this is just a great option for those slower to steady pace runs it's easily padded enough for those longer distances too, and the rocker geometry will really take the stress off your lower leg area, particularly the calf muscles. Personally, I would prefer something slightly more padded for my longer runs, and by that I mean over 90 minutes, up to two hours, something like the Hoka Bondi 8, which is a softer, more padded version of the Clifton, would be my choice for that type of run, just to give me a bit more protection. However, I know a lot of people who would find the Clifton extremely comfortable as a marathon training shoe and a really good option for those daily miles where you're just looking to get out and do some good quality aerobic runs and take the stress off your legs. Additionally, just going into a bit more depth with this rocker midsole technology, it's a great option for you if you have Achilles tendon problems, if you have tight calf muscles, even if you have plantar fascia pain. We actually get a lot of podiatrists recommending customers to come and see us at Run For It for Hoka running shoes because of this curved midsole geometry. It's really accepted now that that shaping helps significantly offload the lower leg area and can even provide some relief for people with plantar fasciitis. So that's a really common recommendation for people who are walking as well. There's no doubt about it. You see a lot of people walking around now in Hoka shoes, particularly the Clifton, it's a great option for long walks or just if you're commuting into work each day. Just a point on going back to the wide fit option of the Clifton 9. If you have a bunion or you have a Morton's Uroma, I would opt for the wide fit version because that will give more space for your feet to display and will help alleviate some pressure there. There is some evidence that opting for a wider fitting shoe can help alleviate some of the symptoms from plantar fascia pain too. So that's just something to bear in mind if you are looking at the Clifton 9 to relieve any symptoms around that foot area. That brings me to the end of this Hoka Clifton 9 shoe review. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. See you next time.